everyone this is three questions with Anne marie fuco here we go the cracks in that name all right i am so pumped i met Anne marie she is a superintendent in st michael albert albertville in uh actually just outside of minneapolis in minnesota giving a little shout out it was so awesome did you know i was gonna do the shout out button did you know i was happy no, I yeah, and your, your staff was so amazingly kind to me. Your team was amazing. And uh, we kicked it, we, we hit it off really, really quickly. And there's a lot of, you know, synergy in what we're doing. And, and to be honest with you, you're like, you're an awesome superintendent. I could totally tell. And you, your people love you. You have very high standards, which I really appreciate. So thanks for taking time out of your day to be on my podcast. Well, thanks for having me. I'm very excited. And staff are still talking about when you were here in August. They said, and I'm not just telling you this because I don't throw out compliments just right. randomly, but many of them said that you were the best keynote uh, that we've ever had. And let me just tell you, I've been doing this 25 years in this district, longer, but in this district, and they let me know when they do not like the keynote. <laughs> um, they will tell me, and they made a the point to stop me in the hallways, in the cafeteria, wherever I was, and say that they um, your message resonated with them. So well, uh, I, why even, why even go on? <laughs> why yeah, even I, go on? No. <laughs> That's it. I cut it. There's a promo right there. That, that yeah. really means a lot to me. And they were, they were, true, true. yeah, they were, they were absolutely amazing to me. So I feel like I, I feel that sometimes, you know, I, I hope I'm really good at what I do. It's always something I strive for, but I will say this. There is a lot of like, when you walk into the district, what's the environment, what's the culture that you're walking into. So it's never just me. Like there's nothing I can do can fix a bad culture, right? Like that's not in, not in a day anyway. So, or an hour or whatever. So that, that you just, now I'm like, I'm blushing. My ring light is off. So you can't really tell, but yeah, th thanks for that. That really means a lot. Cause they were, they were really, really wonderful to me. All right. So I know I actually, it's funny. Cause I, we were talking about this before in the podcast. I know you're really kind of focusing on student voice, um, really talking about, you know, empowering this. I, I, weirdly enough, I saw it on Twitter uh, or X, whatever it is called now. I saw that the work that you're doing. And I know that you've had a ton of different experience, you know, in education, but when you think of a teacher who really inspired you, who's someone you think of and why? I think of my math teacher in high school, Mr. Goulet. He was, um, I was, I'm a math teacher or I was a math teacher, science teacher. And I think it's because of Mr. Goulet. He, you know, math came easily to me, except when I hit geometry. And geometry was a little bit tougher because it was a little bit more random, abstract, and I struggled a little bit. And Mr. Goulet always used to say to me, uh, math is like is Mickey Mouse. It's easy. You just have to figure it out and you have to have a good attitude. And he, it was that. But you know what else it was? It was the relationships. He yeah. always, it's a small school. You know, I think we had a graduating class of 77. But he, so, you know, we'd still had 30 in a class, but he made a point of making a connection with every kid almost every day. And you know, I'm, I'm older now, this was a long time ago, but I, st I remember him out of all the teachers I've had, I remember him because I remember thinking, walking out of his classroom, I wanna be Mr. Goulet. I wanna, I wanna be a math teacher because of him. Um, he, he just made it fun and he made you feel that even though some days I could not figure out the proofs and it made me just, I was irritated because I was a good student top in my class right. and I couldn't figure him out and he, just made you feel like you were you're going to be okay you know and he helped you he just was kind and always made you feel like you could do the work just, all yeah. right let's do it. it i love it the shout out there you know it's funny it's actually really interesting because i'm like there's a lot of similarities between you and i like i felt like there's like we have a lot of the same philosophy and he, what is strange about this i actually was really good at math until geometry. And that was like my downfall. And I don't know if I had a really good relationship with my teachers. I just kind of gave up on it. And I, I struggled with it. I remember when I became a teacher that I knew grade nine and where we were at, that's when geometry started. Like we really kind of dived into it. And I said to, I said, I will teach up to grade eight math because it's a seven to 12 school, but I will not teach grade nine. I will not teach that's grade right. nine. I and, said the same thing. And then, and then actually this, the second year when I'm already there and they're like, yeah, you're teaching grade nine. And I'm like, what? I told you I can't do this. And it was like fascinating to me because when I went through the process, I had to like learn stuff basically a week ahead of kids and kind of go through it. And I, I always think about this because I struggle with it. I had a really good understanding of kids who struggled because I went through this and 
there's a lot of times that, you know, in the science disciplines and the math disciplines, you have people who are totally brilliant, but they don't necessarily build that relationship. They don't see that. So I'm so glad that you had that because that does make a difference because, you know, just having content knowledge doesn't make you a good teacher. It's how you relate to the kids, how kids relate to you and how they make that connection. So I, I, that's so weird that literally when you were saying that, when I went bad, I was like, are you going to say that's where I went wrong? I never came out of it though. So, <laughs> so yeah, I never would have made it through geometry without Mr. Google. That's amazing. Yeah, All right. Okay. I, I know that you actually have connections. I am going to be at the Minnesota high school teacher or principals conference at the Minnesota elementary and middle school. And I know that you have um, good relationships with Michelle Krell, who I just had on the podcast, Bob Driver, who's going to be on my podcast, Bob, if you're listening right now, uh, before I head out there. But I know you work with a lot of great principals, a lot of great administrators. When you think of like a great administrator, who's someone you think of and why? You know, it's funny that you mentioned this because I'm going to go back to relationships again. Hmm. I had, um, I was teaching in the Metro. So I'm in a suburb of Minneapolis and I've been in here 25 years, but for six years, I was in the metro at two different school districts and I liked it, loved teaching, but I just didn't feel a connection. Mm -hmm. I moved out to my current district, St. Michael Obertville, and I was a teacher for um, nine, well, three years, actually, three years here. And the superintendent at the time, Marsha, she was, um, or she is, she's still alive. She was this energetic person who always worked on relationships. And I was a teacher. So I was brand new teacher over at one of our middle schools. And she kept coming into my room and asking about my child, asking about my life. And we just bonded. And I thought, I felt like I was the most important person in the world coming from the Metro district, where I didn't even know who the superintendent was. I didn't know, hardly know who the principals were. Um, she did that. And then she, I found out that she was doing that with everybody. Um, and I'll never forget after three years of teaching, she kept, she would pull up in this, this, um, this, I think it was a blazer at the time. She'd pull up outside my door in my middle school and she would come and knock on the, the, the door. It had an outside door and she'd just walk in and just, just sit there and hang out with me when I was with the kids and the kids gravitated towards her because she was, she was happy. She asked them about their lives. You know, she'd asked them once in a while what we were learning because it was a science class, but she was more focused on who the kids were and who I were or was as a human being. And I'll never forget my third year of teaching out here. So nine years of teaching. She, after it total, she came out and she knocked on the door. It was the last day of school. The kids were, I don't know, I think we were getting ready to shoot our rockets off. And she said, Anne-Marie, I need you to come over and I need you to be the testing coordinator. And I remember it like it was yesterday. So this is 22 years ago. I said, Marsha, I don't know anything about testing. And I was giving her all the reasons I couldn't do it. And she's, and she said, Anne-Marie, she said, you can do whatever you want to do. Like, I know who you are and you don't need to know anything about testing, but I know that you can get this done. So I need you to come over to the district office and I need you to do it. And because of the relationship I had with Marsha, I trusted her. I knew nothing about standardized testing and I didn't even know, think I wanted to do anything with standardized testing, but I knew that I wanted to be like Marsha, just like I wanted to be like Mr. Goulet. And so... I did that and it continued. That lasted a year. She came over and she marched. She walks really fast like I do. And she, she was like the yay hot tall. And she would walk over to my office and she said, Amory. And I would always jump because she'd just like come up behind me and Amory, I need you to be the teaching and learning director. Then, you know, I said, no, I'm doing, you know, I'm like, no, 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 I'm doing this now. Then it was principal. Um, and then it was superintendent. And my journey wouldn't have been the journey that it has been, and I wouldn't be able to impact as many people as I could have without, well, first Mr. Goulet, but not then Marsha, because I never thought I wanted to be an administrator. Um, I want, I just wanted to teach, and teaching is a noble profession, and I love teaching. And most days you'll find me in the classroom because I naturally, I crawl in a kindergarten classroom and I sit in the, the back, and I always tell teachers, hey, new teachers when I go to the new teacher workshop I'm like don't be don't be scared if you see me sitting in the back of your high school chemistry class or kindergarten I'm gonna be I'm there so yeah she was Marsha was impactful um and had a strong um strong impact on me Marsha you know there's so when you were talking about this I there's like almost this tale of two superintendents I experienced and you one of the things you said was Marsha did that for everybody and made that people feel that way 
when I talk about these tale of two superintendents there, and this is, was my experience, there's two superintendents I think of. And when I would have meetings with one, and this is as a teacher, assistant principal, principal, there is one that every time we had a meeting, she was there five, 10 minutes before the meeting. And she was always early. And like, I even tried to beat her at being there because I knew she'd always be early, but she was always there before me. And I never like waited for her or anything like that. And I know it seems like a, a little thing and I didn't really appreciate it until later I had another superintendent and that superintendent always came in late, was always, and it was like always the most important thing was happening before you. And like, sorry, I was at this and this and this. And you kind of just feel like, you know, so, so like everything else is way more important than my time to you. Whereas this person is like, Hey, if I have a meeting with you, I know it seems like such a little thing, but I didn't even notice it until later until I had someone who was like, like, Oh, like this really important thing. That's more important than your time was happening. So I'm late. That, that's kind of what they're saying. They weren't saying that, but you realize those. And you know, someone said to me, uh, I remember listening to some like motivational podcast I was running. I had someone said, you know, Hey, like I am chronically late. Like I can't do this. Okay. Let's say that, um, I tell you, I'll see you at 5. AM tomorrow. And if you make it there before five, I'll give you a million dollars. Would you be late? And they're like, no. And cause it, cause it's important to you. Right. And so, so like that, that was like, kind of like, uh, I was like, that is how I felt. Like my time is not important to this person, but it was like the most important thing. And I knew she did that for everybody. Right. If she said she's going to be somewhere, she'd be there because she honored your time, even though I'm, you know, a, a teacher in the district at the time. So it really, really made a difference. So that, that really stuck out to me when you're talking about, uh, Marsha. All right. Last question. I know you have tons of experience, um, you know, in education, you've been in the same district for a long, long time. I shouldn't say that because I feel bad for saying long, long time. <laughs> well, you kind of have been, so I guess we can yep, say that's it. okay. I'm right. comfortable with it. There's a time. There's a time where you're like you when someone says like how long you've been teaching, you just know. And then there's sometimes where you're like, okay, what year is it? When did I start? You start doing subtraction. <laughs> you got to be going backwards. Yeah. That's how I feel. Uh, you know, my journey in education. So if you can go back to your very first year of teaching and can give advice to yourself, what would that be? Not worry as much about the content. When I first started, I thought I really needed because. I graduated, I went to, when I graduated from college, uh, my bachelor's was pre-med. So I thought I really knew everything about science and math. I thought I did. But when I actually started teaching it, that content threw me a little bit because I had to think a little bit about it because I hadn't done it in a while. And I focused a lot on that content. And that first year, I wish somebody would have told me to focus more on the relationships because I knew relationships were important. I knew the connections. I knew it was supposed to be fun for kids and fun for myself. I knew I wanted to teach my kids um, to take risks and failure, failure was okay um, to achieve true growth. But I focused more on the content and I wanted to please the principal. I wanted to please the parents. And I was so worried about that, that it wasn't, it, it was an okay year. Um, but it took me longer than I wanted, maybe a year and a half to truly figure out that if I was going to continue and I was going to like this, that I needed to, I need to enjoy myself and I need the kids to enjoy themselves so I could really, I could teach them um, that they would feel con co um, comfortable. I wanted to create that culture of learners. And that's is really what I wanted to do. I wanted kids to, to take an idea, a concept and me not give them the information, but I wanted them to run with it. And, you know, if they had something that I wanted to be able to pause and answer questions or say, you know what, let's find the answer. Why don't you find the answer? And let's have a conversation about that. But I didn't. And I wish I knew it. And I kick myself as I reflect. I'm a big reflector when I'm working out and I'm running long miles and I'm thinking to myself, gosh, why did I do that? But I didn't, I didn't know. And now when I get in front, I had 61 new teachers um, a few weeks ago and I told them, you know, I gave them permission. Don't worry about the content right away because the kids, if they don't, they don't have that relationship with you, then they're not going to learn the content. So I want you to get to the content eventually. But don't Absolutely. worry about it right now. You know, be there for the kids. Figure out what makes them tick. Get to know their families. That's what that's what I want for this district. That's what our that's what we're about. Core value, rather than just content, content, content. I love that. You know, so one of the one of my the people I looked up to is uh, it was a principal. His name is Dr. David Pesek, and he's I'll never forget. He said this to me. I was refereeing a basketball game, and I 
uh, was in his school. I, we were in the same district, but I, he wasn't, it, it was actually amazing. I've never seen, and this is like, I, this is the only person I can say this. I've never seen a administrator ever who was so universally loved. Like no one ever had anything bad to say about this person, which no matter how good you are, somebody hates you. I always <laughs> like, it's just reality, but nobody hated him. And he said to me, I said, like, what's one piece of advice you'd have for me? And he goes, he goes, a teacher that's good with relationships and bad with content will last a lot longer than one who's the opposite, because I can teach you the content. I can, I can work with you on how to teach. I can't make you like kids and I'll never forget that. And it's, you know, you, you build the relationship because you're trying to get the kid further than before. It's not like, I think a lot of times when people talk about relationships, like that's their end point but it's actually, it's the beginning point that you you build upon because you're gonna challenge them, right? And if you're gonna challenge your kids, if you're gonna challenge your staff, they gotta know you got your back. And so I think that that's where I got that advice from. So I, I love that. Um, I think that was such a powerful message. I am like, so looking forward to talking to you more. I just don't really appreciate you, your staff, your your team. They're so welcoming me to me. And so I hope everyone enjoyed this as much as I did. Thanks so much for taking your time to be on the podcast. It's the highlight of my day. Awesome. <laughs> okay. It was. It was. Well, the highlight was you saying I was awesome. So I'll take that. Yeah, that was well, like, you are awesome. That's it. Definitely, so. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for being here. Everyone have a wonderful day.